Standard Chinese, Standard Chinese, also known as Modern Standard Mandarin, Standard Mandarin, Modern Standard Mandarin Chinese, MSMC, or simply Mandarin, is a standard variety of Chinese that is the sole official language of China, the de facto official language of Taiwan and also one of the four official languages of Singapore. Its pronunciation is based on the Beijing dialect, its vocabulary on the Mandarin dialects, and its grammar is based on written vernacular Chinese. Like other varieties of Chinese, Standard Chinese is a tonal language with topic prominent organization and subject verb object word order. It has more initial consonants but fewer vowels, final consonants and tones than southern varieties. Standard Chinese is an analytic language, though with many compound words. There are two standardized forms of the language, namely Putonghua in mainland China and Go in Taiwan. Aside from a number of differences in pronunciation and vocabulary, Putonghua is written using simplified Chinese characters, plus Hanyu Pinyin romanization for teaching, and Go is written using traditional Chinese characters plus Uyin for teaching. Many characters are identical between the two systems. In Chinese, the standard variety is known as Standard Chinese is also commonly referred to by generic names for Chinese, notably and, compare for English, and. In total, there have been known over 20 various names for the language. The term Go had previously been used by non-Han rulers of China to refer to their languages, but in 1909 the Qing Education Ministry officially applied it to Mandarin, a lingua franca based on northern Chinese varieties, proclaiming it as the new national language. The name Putonghua also has a long, albeit unofficial, history. It was used as early as 1906 in writings by Zhu Wengshang to differentiate a modern, standard Chinese from classical Chinese and other varieties of Chinese. For some linguists of the early 20th century, the Putonghua, or common tongue slash speech, was conceptually different from the Go, or national language. The former was a national prestige variety, while the latter was the legal standard. Based on common understandings of the time, the two were, in fact, different. Go was understood as formal vernacular Chinese, which is close to classical Chinese. By contrast, Putonghua was called the common speech of the modern man which is the spoken language adopted as a national lingua franca by conventional usage. The use of the term Putonghua by left-leaning intellectuals such as Chu Kuiyubai and Lu Xun influenced the People's Republic of China government to adopt the term to describe Mandarin in 1956. Prior to this, the government used both terms interchangeably. In Taiwan, Go, national language, continues to be the official term for standard Chinese. The term Go however, is less used in the PRC because declaring a Beijing dialect-based standard to be the national language would be deemed unfair to speakers of other varieties and to the ethnic minorities. The term Putonghua, common speech, on the contrary, implies nothing more than the notion of a lingua franca. During the government of a pro-Taiwan independence coalition, 2000-2008, Taiwan officials promoted a different reading of U as all of the national languages, meaning Hokkien, Hakka and Formosan as well as standard Chinese. Huayu, or language of the Chinese nation, originally simply meant Chinese language, and was used in overseas communities to contrast Chinese with foreign languages. Over time, the desire to standardize the variety of Chinese spoken in these communities led to the adoption of the name Huayu to refer to Mandarin. This name also avoids choosing a side between the alternative names of Putonghua and Go, which came to have political significance after their usages diverged along political lines between the PRC and the ROC. It also incorporates the notion that Mandarin is usually not the national or common language of the areas in which overseas Chinese live. Hanyu, or language of the Han people, is another umbrella term used for Chinese. However, it has confusingly two different meanings. This term, as well as Hanzu, is a relatively modern concept. It came into being with the rise of Chinese nationalism in the 19th and 20th centuries. A related concept is Hansa. The term Mandarin is a translation of Guanhua, literally official speech, which referred to the lingua franca of the late Chinese empire. The Chinese term is obsolete as a name for the standard language, but is used by linguists to refer to the major group of Mandarin dialects spoken natively across most of northern and southwestern China. In English, Mandarin may refer to the standard language, the dialect group as a whole, 
or to historic forms such as the late imperial lingua franca. The name modern standard Mandarin is sometimes used by linguists who wish to distinguish the current state of the shared language from other northern and historic dialects. Chinese has long had considerable dialectal variation, hence prestige dialects have always existed, and lingua franca have always been needed. Confucius, for example, used Yian, rather than colloquial regional dialects, text during the Han dynasty also referred to Tung Yu. Rhyme books, which were written since the Northern and Southern dynasties, may also have reflected one or more systems of standard pronunciation during those times. However, all of these standard dialects were probably unknown outside the educated elite, even among the elite, pronunciations may have been very different, as the unifying factor of all Chinese dialects, classical Chinese, was a written standard, not a spoken one. The Ming Dynasty, 1368 to 1644, and the Qing Dynasty, 1644 to 1912, began to use the term guanhua, slash, or official speech, to refer to the speech used at the courts. The term Mandarin is borrowed directly from Portuguese. The Portuguese word Mandarin, derived from the Sanskrit word Mantran counselor or minister, was first used to refer to the Chinese bureaucratic officials. The Portuguese then translated guanhua as the language of the Mandarins or the Mandarin language. In the 17th century, the empire had set up orthoopy academies in an attempt to make pronunciation conform to the standard. But these attempts had little success, since as late as the 19th century the emperor had difficulty understanding some of his own ministers in court, who did not always try to follow any standard pronunciation. Before the 19th century, the standard was based on the Nanjing dialect, but later the Beijing dialect became increasingly influential. Despite the mix of officials and commoners speaking various dialects in the capital, Beijing, by some accounts, as late as the early 20th century, the position of Nanjing Mandarin was considered to be higher than that of Beijing by some and the postal romanization standards set in 1906 included spellings with elements of Nanjing pronunciation. Nevertheless, by 1909, the Dingqing dynasty had established the Beijing dialect as Gu, slash, or the national language. As the island of Taiwan had fallen under Japanese rule per the 1895 Treaty of Shimonoseki, the term referred to the Japanese language until the handover to the Aros in 1945. After the Republic of China was established in 1912, there was more success in promoting a common national language. A commission on the unification of pronunciation was convened with delegates from the entire country. A Dictionary of National Pronunciation, slash, was published in 1919. Defining a hybrid pronunciation hat did not match any existing speech. Meanwhile, despite the lack of a workable standardized pronunciation, colloquial literature and written vernacular Chinese continue to develop a pace. Gradually, the members of the National Language Commission came to settle upon the Beijing dialect, which became the major source of standard national pronunciation due to its prestigious status. In 1932, the commission published the vocabulary of national pronunciation for everyday use, slash, with little fanfare or official announcement. This dictionary was similar to the previous published one except that it normalized the pronunciations for all characters and taught the pronunciation of the Beijing dialect. Elements from other dialects continued to exist in the standard language, but as exceptions rather than the rule. After the Chinese Civil War, the People's Republic of China continued the effort, and in 1955, officially renamed Guo as Butonghua, slash, or common speech. By contrast, the name Guo continued to be used by the Republic of China which, after its 1949 loss in the Chinese Civil War, was left with a territory consisting only of Taiwan and some smaller islands. Since then, the standards used in the PRC and Taiwan have diverged somewhat, especially in newer vocabulary terms, and a little in pronunciation. In 1956, the standard language of the People's Republic of China was officially defined as, Pu Tunghua is the standard form of modern Chinese with the Beijing phonological system as its norm of pronunciation, and northern dialects as its base dialect, and looking to exemplary modern works in Beiwa vernacular literary language for its grammatical norms. By the official definition, standard Chinese uses. In the early 1950s, this standard language was understood by 41% of the population of the country, including 54% of speakers of Mandarin dialects, but only 11% of people in the rest of the country. By 1984, 
the proportion understanding the standard language nationally had risen to 90% and the proportion understanding the standard language among the speakers of Mandarin dialects had risen to 91%. A survey conducted by the China's Education Ministry in 2007 indicated that 53.06% of the population were able to effectively communicate orally in standard Chinese. From an official point of view, standard Chinese serves the purpose of a lingua franca a way for speakers of the several mutually unintelligible varieties of Chinese, as well as the Chinese minorities, to communicate with each other. The very name Putonghua, or common speech, reinforces this idea. In practice, however, due to standard Chinese being a public lingua franca, other Chinese varieties and even non-Sinitic languages, have shown signs of losing ground to the standard. China's Education Ministry published research on September, 2014 that only 70% percent of people of the PRC had good understanding and speaking skill of Putonghua despite the Chinese government promoting Putonghua on TV, radio and public services like buses to develop Putonghua as PRC official language to ease communication between all people of the PRC, because many ethnic groups had their own dialects, so it was problem to understand each other. To develop the Putonghua as the official common language of the PRC is difficult sometimes because some ethnic groups that are using other dialects don't like uses Putonghua because they think they are losing their own native dialect and cultural identity. For example, when in the summer of 2010 appeared some reports of increasing the using of the Putonghua on a local TV broadcasting in Cantonese dialect in the province of Guangdong, then thousands of Cantonese speaking citizens were protesting in the demonstration against the plan. In both China and Taiwan, the use of Mandarin as the medium of instruction in the educational system and in the media has contributed to the spread of Mandarin. As a result, Mandarin is now spoken fluently, though often with some regional or personal variation from the standard in terms of pronunciation or lexicon, by most people in mainland China and Taiwan. In 2014, the Ministry of Education estimated that about 70% of the population of China spoke standard Mandarin to some degree but only one-tenth of those could speak it fluently and articulately. However, there is a 20% difference in penetration between eastern and western parts of China and a 50% difference between urban and rural areas. In addition, there are still 400 million Chinese who are only able to listen and understand Mandarin and not able to speak it. Therefore, in China's 13th five-year plan, the general goal is to raise the penetration rate to over 80% by 2020. Both mainland China and Taiwan use standard Chinese in the official context and the governments are keen to promote its use as a national lingua franca. The PRC in particular has enacted a law, the National Common Language and Writing Law, which states that the government must promote standard Mandarin. There is no explicit official intent to have standard Chinese replace the regional varieties, but local governments have enacted regulations such as the Guangdong National Language Regulations, which implement the national law by way of coercive measures to control the public use of regional spoken varieties and traditional characters in writing. In practice, some elderly or rural Chinese language speakers do not speak standard Chinese fluently, if at all, though most are able to understand it. But urban residents and the younger generations, who receive their education with standard Mandarin as the primary medium of education, are almost all fluent in a version of standard Chinese some to the extent of being unable to speak their local dialect. In the predominantly Han areas in mainland China, while the use of standard Chinese is encouraged as the common working language, the PRC has been somewhat sensitive to the status of minority languages and, outside the education context, has generally not discouraged their social use. Standard Chinese is commonly used for practical reasons, as, in many parts of southern China, the linguistic diversity is so large that neighboring city dwellers may have difficulties communicating with each other without a lingua franca. In Taiwan, the relationship between standard Chinese and other varieties, particularly Taiwanese Hokkien, has been more politically heated. During the martial law period under the Kuomintang, KMT, between 1949 and 1987, the KMT government revived the Mandarin Promotion Council and discouraged or, in some cases, forbade the use of Hokkien and other non-standard varieties. This produced a political backlash in the 1990s. Under the administration of Chen Shui-bian, other Taiwanese varieties were taught in schools. The former president, Chen Shui-bian, often spoke in Hokkien during speeches, while after the late 1990s, former president Li Tang-hui, also speaks Hokkien openly. In Hong Kong and Macau, 
which are now special administrative regions of the People's Republic of China. Cantonese is the primary language spoken by the majority of the population and used by government and in their respective legislatures. After Hong Kong's handover from the United Kingdom and Macau's handover from Portugal, their governments use Putonghua to communicate with the Central People's Government of the PRC. There have been widespread efforts to promote usage of Putonghua in Hong Kong since the handover, with specific efforts to train police and teachers. In Singapore, the government has heavily promoted a speak Mandarin campaign since the late 1970s, with the use of other Chinese varieties and broadcast media being prohibited and their use in any context officially discouraged until recently. This has led to some resentment amongst the older generations, as Singapore's migrant Chinese community is made up almost entirely of people of South Chinese descent. Li Guan Yu, the initiator of the campaign, admitted that to most Chinese Singaporeans, Mandarin was a stepmother tongue rather than a true mother language. Nevertheless, he saw the need for a unified language among the Chinese community not by a sedine favor of any existing group. Mandarin is now spreading overseas beyond East Asia and Southeast Asia as well. In New York City, the use of Cantonese that dominated the Manhattan Chinatown for decades is being rapidly swept aside by Mandarin, the lingua franca of most of the latest Chinese immigrants. In both the PRC and Taiwan, standard Chinese is taught by immersion starting in elementary school. After the second grade, the entire educational system is in standard Chinese, except for local language classes that have been taught for a few hours each week in Taiwan starting in the mid-1990s. In December 2004, the first survey of language use in the People's Republic of China revealed that only 53% of its population, about 700 million people, could communicate in standard Chinese. This 53% is defined as a passing grade above 3B, a score above 60%, of the evaluation exam. With the fast development of the country and the massive internal migration in China, the standard Putonghua proficiency test has quickly become popular. Many university graduates in mainland China take this exam before looking for a job. Employers often require varying proficiency in standard Chinese from applicants depending on the nature of the positions. Applicants of some positions, for example telephone operators, may be required to obtain a certificate. People raised in Beijing are sometimes considered inherently 1A a score of at least 97%, and exempted from this requirement. As for the rest, the score of 1A is rare. According to the official definition of proficiency levels, people who get 1B, a score of at least 92%, are considered qualified to work as television correspondents or in broadcasting stations. 2A, a score of at least 87%, can work as Chinese literature course teachers in public schools. Other levels include 2B, a score of at least 80%, 3A, a score of at least 70%, and 3B, a score of at least 60%. In China, a proficiency of level 3B usually cannot be achieved unless special training is received. Even though many Chinese do not speak with standard pronunciation, spoken standard Chinese is widely understood to some degree. The China National Language and Character Working Committee was founded in 1985. One of its important responsibilities is to promote standard Chinese proficiency for Chinese native speakers. The usual unit of analysis is the syllable, consisting of an optional initial consonant, an optional medial glide, a main vowel and an optional coda, and further distinguished by a tone. The palatal initials, and pose a classic problem of phonemic analysis. Since they occur only before high front vowels, they are in complementary distribution with three other series, the dental sibilants, retroflexes and velars, which never occur in this position. The final, which occurs only after dental sibilant and retroflex initials, is a syllabic approximant, prolonging the initial dot. The rhoticized vowel forms a complete syllable. A reduced form of this syllable occurs as a subsyllabic suffix spelled R in pinyin and often with a diminutive connotation. The suffix modifies the code of the base syllable in a roticizing process called a wa. Each full syllable is pronounced with a phonemically distinctive pitch contour. There are four tonal categories, marked in pinyin with iconic diacritic symbols, as in the words ma, mother, ma, hemp, ma, horse, and ma, curse. The tonal categories also have secondary characteristics. For example, the third tone is long and murmured, whereas the fourth tone is relatively short. Statistically, vowels and tones are of similar importance in the language. There are also weak syllables, including grammatical particles such as the interrogative ma, 
slash, and certain syllables in polysyllabic words. These syllables are short, with their pitch determined by the preceding syllable. It is common for standard Chinese to be spoken with the speaker's regional accent, depending on factors such as age, level of education, and the need and frequency to speak in official or formal situations. This appears to be changing, though, in large urban areas, as social changes, migrations, and urbanization take place. Due to evolution and standardization, Mandarin, although based on the Beijing dialect, is no longer synonymous with it. Part of this was due to the standardization to reflect a greater vocabulary scheme in a more archaic and proper-sounding pronunciation and vocabulary. Distinctive features of the Beijing dialect are more extensive use of Uwa and vocabulary items that are left unadorned in descriptions of the standard such as the Shandai Han Yusidian, as well as more neutral tones. An example of standard versus Beijing dialect would be the standard men, door, and Beijing men. Most standard Chinese as spoken on Taiwan differs mostly in the tones of some words as well as some vocabulary. Minimal use of the neutral tone and iwa, and technical vocabulary constitute the greatest divergences between the two forms. The stereotypical southern Chinese accent does not distinguish between retroflex and alveolar consonants, pronouncing pinyin ch, ts, ch, tsh, and sh, s, in the same way as c, ts, c, tsh and s, s, respectively. Southern accented standard Chinese may also interchange l and n, final n and ng, and vowels i and u diaresis, y. Attitudes towards southern accents, particularly the Cantonese accent, range from disdain to admiration. Chinese is a strongly analytic language, having almost no inflectional morphemes, and relying on word order and particles to express relationships between the parts of a sentence. Nouns are not marked for case and rarely marked for number. Verbs are not marked for agreement or grammatical tense, but aspect is marked using postverbal particles. The basic word order is subject verb object, SVO, as in English. Nouns are generally preceded by any modifiers, adjectives, possessives, and relative clauses. And verbs also generally follow any modifiers, adverbs, auxiliary verbs and prepositional phrases. The predicate can be an intransitive verb, a transitive verb followed by a direct object, a copula, linking verb, she, followed by a noun phrase, etc. In predicative use, Chinese adjectives function as stative verbs, forming complete predicates in their own right without a copula. For example, another example is the common greeting ni hao, literally you good. Chinese additionally differs from English in that it forms another kind of sentence by stating a topic and following it by a common dot. To do this in English, speakers generally flag the topic of a sentence by prefacing it with as for. For example the time when something happens can be given by an explicit term such as yesterday, by relative terms such as formerly, etc. As in many East Asian languages, classifiers or measure words are required when using numerals, demonstratives and similar quantifiers. There are many different classifiers in the language, and each noun generally has a particular classifier associated with it. The general classifier GE, slash, is gradually replacing specific classifiers. Many formal, polite and humble words that were in use in Imperial China have not been used in daily conversation in modern-day Mandarin, such as Jian, my humble, and Gui, your honorable. Although Chinese speakers make a clear distinction between standard Chinese and the Beijing dialect, there are aspects of Beijing dialect that have made it into the official standard. Standard Chinese has a TV distinction between the polite and informal you that comes from the Beijing dialect, although its use is quite diminished in daily speech. In addition, it also distinguishes between Zanmen, we including the listener, and women, we not including the listener. In practice, neither distinction is commonly used by most Chinese, at least outside the Beijing area. The following samples are some phrases from the Beijing dialect which are not yet accepted into standard Chinese. The following samples are some phrases from Beijing dialect which have become accepted as standard Chinese. Standard Chinese is written with characters corresponding to syllables of the language, most of which represent a morpheme. In most cases, these characters come from those used in classical Chinese to write cognate morphemes of late Old Chinese, though their pronunciation, and often meaning, has shifted dramatically over two millennia. However, there are several words, many of them heavily used, which have no classical counterpart or whose etymology is obscure. Two strategies have been used to write such words. 
The government of the PRC, as well as some other governments and institutions, has promulgated a set of simplified forms. Under this system, the forms of the word seli, here, and nali, there, changed from and to an. Chinese characters were traditionally read from top to bottom, right to left, but in modern usage it is more common to read from left to right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.